Hello, welcome to another session of interesting digital slide cases. Uh, I'm Dr. Lewis Hassel, and our program is part of the Digital Anatomic Pathology Academy, which is a joint venture with Path Presenter and the Digital Pathology Association. Our cases today come from the realm of uh, GYN pathology and uh, involves a relatively young woman who uh, was found to have an ovarian mass on clinical exam. Um, the mass was unilateral, uh, about uh, eight centimeters in size, uh, kind of palpable uh, as in large, but not uh, overly uh, uh, massive. Um, so uh, it was deemed that surgery would be needed to establish a diagnosis and determine a prognosis. And so she came to resection. And although we did not take a photo at the time, this uh, photo from the literature uh, with a wonderful black, probably MGH origin uh, uh, backdrop, shows the features that were uh, noted, which consisted of some gelatinous uh, type of uh, pale reddish tan uh, tissue with intervening fibrous areas, um, and um, uh, some of the uh, cystic changes that uh, might also have been uh, noted. Um, a frozen section was performed, and uh, this uh, sample is uh, representative. As you can see, it's uh, a loose, uh, somewhat sieve-like pattern with uh, small cystic spaces. And we might think at low magnification of a number of things, a microcystic stromal tumor, for example, or uh, potentially even a uh, neoplastic lesion. Um, looking at the variable amounts of uh, follicular uh, patterned uh, uh, structures, however, we see that there's this central uh, uh, kind of uh, loose proteinaceous material, somewhat pinkish. And looking at the cells uh, surrounding and lining these areas, uh, these have a nice uh, eosinophilic uh, structure um, and rare, fairly round nuclei, not particularly closely packed. So a diagnosis of uh, struma ovari was uh, rendered at the time of for frozen section. Now, as we know, that's a monodermal teratoma that includes thyroid tissue and may uh, be present either in isolation or as uh, a uh, component of other uh, teratomatous lesions. Uh, but among the monodermal teratomas, this is the most frequent type of monodermal teratoma. <clears throat> what made this case interesting became evident at the permanent section, which is seen here. Uh, which again shows uh, nice areas of uh, sort of macro follicular pattern, a lot of colloid uh, type of uh, structures, but became a little bit worrisome as we saw these more solid areas like this uh, and uh, came into higher magnification. Now, as you can see, these uh, cells, uh, again, still have this sort of follicular pattern, uh, but the follicles are much uh, smaller the cytoplasm is uh, clearing, and there's a degree of nuclear atypia here. Um, so looking further, uh, we saw that there are some areas where we get this scalloping, and the nuclei seem to be crowding a little bit. And if you'll take my word for it, there are a few uh, nuclear grooves beginning to be evident, as well as some variability with uh, macronucleoli in some of these cells. Um, and a little bit of uh, coarsening of the chromatin, occasional some clearing um, and features uh, of that sort. So begin to suspect there's a little bit more nuclear atypia here. Um, and as you may have picked up uh, when I was at low magnification, we also have an area where in addition to this sort of mixed uh, uh, follicular pattern, we begin to see a more classic uh, papillary type of architecture uh, down here. Um, and so areas like this, we begin to have a more uh, typical papillary type of architecture. Uh, and as we come into higher magnification here, we can again see more fully developed the nuclear features of uh, papillary thyroid carcinoma uh, with some nuclear grooves, some crowding, some coarsening of the chromatin, occasional nucleoli, and this clearing in the cytoplasm with the formation of uh, at least to some degree areas of uh, papillarity, uh, allowing us to classify this as a 
uh, a more classic type of papillary carcinoma with areas of uh, more follicular differentiation. So uh, this is an example of a secondary malignancy arising in a mature teratoma. Here again, we see nice areas of papillarity here uh, in what would uh, certainly pass as a textbook example for uh, papillary thyroid carcinoma if you were uh, coming from the thyroid. So um, secondary malignancies arising in teratomas um, include a number of tumors uh, from the mature cystic teratomas that include all three germ lines. Most commonly, uh, squamous cell carcinoma is seen. And that's because the dominant epithelium in these usually is squamous epithelium. But we can see a variety of adenocarcinomas, colonic, lung, other types of uh, adenocarcinomas, pancreatic, and so forth. We can see melanomas with some frequency and occasionally sarcomas. Uh, neuroglial tumors have been reported, and then there is a variety of mixed phenotypes that can also be seen, uh, as, such as uh, you know biphenotypic tumors of uh, various CNS and rhabdoid or sarcomatous lesions that become quite uh, uh, rare, but quite bizarre also to uh, sort out. From the monodermal teratomas, certainly thyroid carcinomas and stromal carcinoid would be the uh, two main lesions with, uh, which are seen in this uh, circumstance. However, um, my, one of my colleagues, Dr. Atwe, and uh, other of our residents did a very exhaustive search of the literature uh, when writing a review and came up with this uh, rather lengthy uh, list of uh, reported secondary cancers from teratomas. And as you can see, they run the, the full range from um, you know, unusual mesenchymal tumors to uh, salivary gland tumors, brain tumors, uh, and uh, so forth on down the, uh, the, the row of a possible um, uh, neoplasia. When we think about um, papillary carcinomas arising in Struma ovarii, this is uh, certainly the most frequent malignancy that arises in Struma ovarii. And like primary tumors in the thyroid, it may also be associated with uh, recognizable uh, mutational or rearrangement events, such as with BRAF or RET-PTC. Uh, but uh, the number of cases that have been thoroughly studied or tested in this situation is, uh, to say the least, very limited. And as expected, the immunohistochemistry will be helpful in verifying this, showing positive staining with uh, typical thyroid markers, TTF1, thyroglobulin, PAX8, CK7, and negative reactions with things that you might consider in the differential, like clear cell carcinoma. It's not going to be, it's, it's NAPS and A negative. It's not a, uh, <clears throat> a sex sort stromal tumor. You're going to be inhibin or calretinin negative and so forth. Uh, interestingly, there are other thyroid malignancies that can also arise in struma, such as follicular carcinoma. Though since these are rarely, if ever, encapsulated, uh, it really requires a demonstration of uh, uh, more extensive spread to be confident that you're dealing with a follicular carcinoma. Poorly differentiated and even undifferentiated thyroid carcinomas can also present uh, in struma ovary, and interestingly, also medullary carcinoma. Uh, so uh, the, the gamut of thyroid tumors occurring in struma ovarii is uh, really essentially the gamut of thyroid tumors that you see in the thyroid. Um, and probably the frequencies uh, also correspond to those uh, events. Um, <clears throat> treatment and follow-up are very interesting in this situation. There's not a lot of data, um, but there certainly uh, is um, <clears throat> concerned that uh, this may be reflective of disease in the thyroid. Um, and so some have advocated uh, the use of uh, radioiodine ablation or potentially even concomitant surgery uh, uh, in the thyroid to eliminate the possibility of microcarcinomas or residual disease uh, in that setting. Um, but uh, the uh, decision making is uh, individualized at this point and uh, largely anecdotal. So I uh, hope this was helpful to you. Our final diagnosis uh, today is uh, a papillary thyroid carcinoma, mixed classic and follicular types arising in struma ovarii. 
And we hope that if you like this, you'll hit that like button and uh, help others to also get a chance to see this very interesting and relatively unique case that uh, came across our desk. And as always, we would love for you to subscribe to the channel. Um, we uh, continue to post videos with some regularity, and uh, that allows you to uh, catch what we have posted and benefit from it and learn uh, even as we are learning as we go along. So until next time, thanks so much for joining me.